your project structure looks like this, you might want to reconsider. I will show you why this isn't the best way of doing it. There is a better way of structuring your project. Odin isn't easy or simple. The complex logic you build for a software or project needs a way of expressing what their purpose is through their structure, to avoid falling the trap of only display what it was made of instead. Now there is a way you can do that which will also help you with fundamentals like object-oriented principles. But how is that even related? They are very so much connected because it's part of the code architecture of your project. How you organize your project pieces is much more important than you think. The question you should try to answer is, what my project architecture tells me on its higher level? In other words, think about what you can understand just by looking at the first folders of your project. Is it the type of data of your project or is it the objects and what they actually do? Because there's quite a difference from these two. Why is that even important? Because it's how you're splitting your project functionality. This type of project structure, for example, is pretty bad, but why is that? Don't mind the weird issues with following clean code styles or principles like naming principles and other things because this is an older project and I was still learning various basic things inside the software. So just notice the structure of this one. What does it tell you? Your project is made of data, scripts, scenes. This is a classification method by data types or object types. Why is that even important? You got to have it separate at the first level of your project. A better way is to separate by function instead of type. Now you can grow objects together and elements by exactly what they do or how they work together, why they should exist and what their purpose is. This helps you with object-oriented principles because it makes you think from the start how you are separating, classifying and limiting your objects, how your project should work as a whole. You just don't put all your objects together because they are made of the same materials or type. You are now separating them based on what they actually do, which is much more important than what they are made of, their type, which is something very easy we can just get by, for instance, reading their extension type. There is a short clip from Robert C. Martin where they talk about clean architecture and design talk. This was my initial inspiration kick for this video and how I got to start to think about this whole thing about separating your structure of a project by function rather than by type. <laughs> architecture. The genesis of this talk was about three to four years ago. And it came about because my son, who is the uh, founder of this company, I now work for him, came to me with an application written in um, Ruby. And he showed it to me and I noticed something. And it, it was the first time I had noticed this something. But it was a common something. It was common to most Ruby applications. So I went back six or seven years to a Ruby application that I had written, and I noticed the same thing. This is the high-level directory structure of the application I wrote uh, in 2004-ish time frame, 2005-ish time frame. Um, and notice the directories. At the highest level we've got substitute, whatever the heck that is. And then immediately below that we have these directories that have very familiar names. Controllers, models, views. This is what I saw when my son showed me his application. This is what I did when I did my Rails application. But on this particular event I looked at it and realized there's something wrong with this. Why is this application at its highest level telling me that it is composed of models, views, and controllers? Why isn't it telling me what it does? At its very highest level, why isn't it telling me what it does? Why is it telling me how it's made? I thought about that for a minute and I began to realize something. This application was put together using a common web framework, Rails. Uh, some of you probably use another common web framework, uh, either in .NET or in Java or whatever platform you are using. And very likely you have some similar kind of directory structure which exposes the elements that that framework demands. Why is it that the first thing I see is the framework? 
Why does the framework dominate? Why does the web dominate? Here's the thing that was bothering me. The web, for all its complexity, for all its importance, the web is a detail. It's not the essence of our application. The web is an I.O. channel. Why would we structure our application around an I.O. channel? Why would the I.O. channel dictate the structure at the highest level of our application? There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that idea. Because I went and I got some blueprints out. And I looked at those blueprints and I found, for example, this one. This is the blueprint of a library. And if you look at it, it's obviously a library. There are bookshelves that hold journals. There's a circulation desk. There's a video collection. There's this area over here with PCs on it that you can look at. There's reading desks. This is a library. The picture tells you it's a library. And if that doesn't convince you, this one will, that's a church. It's obviously a church. The architecture of the building tells you not what it's made of, not what its architectural uh, frameworks were. It doesn't tell you that it's a concrete building. It doesn't tell you that it was built with hammers and saws. What it tells you is its intent. Architecture is about intent. This is not a new idea. Now, this talk is 58 minutes long and has a lot more important information. I'll put a link in the description if you want to see it. But I find very important that point he makes from separating your project by its function rather than its type. We usually don't care about how things are made. Talking in an abstract way, we care about what objects do in the first place, because that's the reason they exist. Then understanding how they are made, organized or code together is the second part, because we want to maintain the code or make modifications. So the better way of applying this principle in a project is to split your structure and code architecture by function rather than by type. The only benefits I can think of when using this type of way to organize your project is that it looks a little more cool and aesthetic. And it also provides you with lists. But list is what a lot of software already does for you because they work with types. Because they have different functions or tools for specific object types, you don't need to separate them in a specific script folder. You know, the real issue with this type of method of organizing your project is that when the amount of things in the folder grows when you are expanding your project to be a little bigger and the relationship between them becomes a muddy mess because you no longer know what connects with what, what is part of what, there's no distinction between the objects itself, what the relationship are. It's just a classification system by type which mixes everything together when how they are made. Now, if you make a classification system by function or what the objects are exactly doing, we can understand that any objects or code inside their subfolders are somehow connected or linked together. Mixing separate objects becomes a challenge then, but it should, because they are separate different things. They shouldn't talk with each other unless through an interface or another object that uses both of them, which you can group together in a pair folder if it's appropriate. Then we are starting to build relationships and structure with just placing objects where they should be based on what they do. But otherwise, if you separate objects in a big list of, like say, a scripts folder, just because they are scripts, how can you explain what is linked together with what? Imagine you want to port parts of a project to another. Because you are smart and you want to keep rewriting stuff, you already can just simply copy and paste something and adapt it later on another project. Say in an example of a game project, let's say we want to copy a camera system we built. Unless your camera code is contained and isolated in a single script, you're going to have to hunt down for the code parts that deal with the camera, the objects and scenes you built that uses them, and then copy all of that back to another project, which is going to give you some time if you want to search it on using this type of structure. Now, if you instead use this type of structure, it's much simple to find it because everything is contained as by functionality, not type. And we usually work like this. We at home don't separate things because they are made of the same material. Like we don't separate cups because they are made of plastic, porcelain or glass. We instead separate them by function. So 
For instance, kitchen things should be inside of the kitchen. Tools should be inside of a toolbox or shelf. Then the car tools should be in the garage. This is if you are organized in a conventional home. But let's say we change the structure to be a bunker or another building type. Then the whole thing can change. So that is one of the reasons why it's very important to separate your objects and X structures by what they actually do instead of what they are made of. I'll give you another bad example from one of uh, older projects of mine when I was still learning Godot. We can see that the folders containing the code and objects from just their type. This scripts folder is a cavalier mess, which I try to improve by grouping together with name hierarchies like UI underscore as a base for anything related to UI. But as we can see, it doesn't help that much. I have no idea what these do until I open them and start reading the code. Now, if we instead have them separated by function, we know what parts of the code relate to each other. Because of this structure, you are forced to think of how the objects and their functionality will connect with each other. So it's a little more hard to manage this type of structure as your project starts, because it forces you to build objects that will encapsulate a single idea or function, making it easier to build object-oriented principles inside of them, because you already separate them by the things that they do. You have to bridge the connection between different objects in ways that make sense and are more clean than just throwing that together by their type. But the idea of separating objects by their type isn't completely wrong. Now that you know how to build structures by function rather than type, inside of those first folders which you separate by function, you can also list objects by their type when it's relevant to the function. So you can mix these two styles when it's more convenient. If you will be using this type of approach in Gideo, it might be useful to display the name of the folders with the script names rather than only their names. Like for instance, if you're using main as the main connection ports of your object or class. This way, you know the main parts of your object. If it's an object, you will need also a scene. You can use a main.tsn. Or if it's code, main.gd. This way, you know why this is the main piece of your code and what it actually do as an object or function. And in Godot, we can display the folder name to help us understand from what the main file is, which is a setting you can find on the editor settings, text editor, list script name as parent, director, and name. Now, everyone has been using this type of workflow of separating your project content into folders by type from somewhere. From somewhere, you start to copy someone that teaches you something about this. And you have you ever thought about what got you into that workflow in the first place? For me, it was a very simple habit that I developed in back in the days of good old Game Maker. The versions of around 6.x, I think. That piece of software has made part of my game development journey, and guess what? Their project structure examples from the basic tutorials were with separation of folders by type, which have created this idea in my head that I need to separate objects by type. I personally would recommend you to switch your workflow with separating your code architecture with folders by functions to see if it doesn't work a little better. It's more clean, it's more objective, and it's easier to maintain and expand. Because after a while, you know from just a glance at your folders what the objects inside of them actually do, how they relate, and what they are made of. Instead of having a big folder with an unsorted mess of things piled together without anything better than to say, these are scripts, these are sounds, etc. Which is, needless to say, not that type of important information, because you don't know how they relate together. So you don't know, you gotta open each one and read them separately. However, separating objects by function is a little more complicated to build a project this way, because you have to define what the limits and functions of the objects are when they don't even exist. Instead of saving a script under a scripts folder, which turns them to be a little more abstract, and we sometimes like this idea, because we can postpone decisions, they can limit or define our project, because we are still building them. So defining limits and scope is what makes better projects though. You exactly know what you expect to build. So just like the idea of what Robert said, the code architecture of a project should display what is their intended function and goal, not how they are made or the type of their objects. So that is why your folder sucks and you should give this a try at splitting your project by function rather than by type. My name is Philip, I'm going to stay here and thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.